Hello, my name is Sandro De Gregorio and I'm the Project Division Manager and Erasmus Plus Coordinator at Santiago Apostol Cabanial School. Our school is uh, proudly one of the project promoters and um, also a peculiar one. Uh, we have our reasons to decide to join this project, the EcoThings project funded by the European Union in the KA220 school branch. Let's have a look at our school. Um, we decided to promote EcoThings because we work exclusively with children at risk of social exclusion. Among the many things that this implies from the pedagogical perspective, um, there, is, there are learning difficulties, social conflicts, less access to technology, uh, the STEM approach, absenteeism and school dropout. This was, these are the main reasons why we thought that Echo Things was a good idea for us. In 2021, our pupils population was 98% Roma and only 2% Spanish non-Roma. That's a huge percentage of Roma people that automatically defines our school as an educational ghetto. So we took some decisions in 2022 and 2023 and starting a marketing campaign, an educational marketing campaign, with the objective to lower the percentage of Roma students. In 2024, we managed to have a distri distribution which includes 88% of Roma students, 10% of students with immigrant background and only 2% of Spanish non-Roma. Also for all these reasons, um, the types of students we uh, deal with, uh, the socioeconomic um, background and the difficulties they have to face, the barriers uh, as they are defined in the Erasmus Plus program, they have to face. Uh, we decided in 2010 to start a transformation process into a learning community. Um, this was a major uptake for our school uh, because um, when you work with students at risk of social exclusion, you have to face uh, um, uh, unemployment, family instability, poor housing, lack of parental skills. Um, half of the families are illiterate and 14% of them are offenders. Um, so um, we thought the learning com communities were a good idea. Let's have a look at what they are. This idea um, emerged uh, uh, within uh, an included project uh, within the sixth framework program by the European Council. It's based on six educational pillars or educational, successful educational actions as they are defined in the project. The first one being interactive groups. Interactive groups is the most important of these skills for our school and uh, it was the technique implemented in the project. The other five are dialogic talks, parents training, educational participation of the community, dialogic model for conflict management, very important for us as well, and teachers' dialogic training. Uh, as you can see, the focus on dialogue and participation is huge. All the actors involved uh, are asked to uh, use dialogue to reach conclusions, to make decisions. Um, and by all the actors, uh, uh, I mean pupils, teachers, non-teaching staff, which includes uh, psychologists, um, social workers, educators and volunteers, companies, institutions, neighbors and collaborators. Um, in our, at our school, we use assemblies a lot. We use it within the classroom, among classrooms, so um, there are classroom representatives that they meet on a regular basis, uh, there are mixed commissions that uh, unite parents, teaching personnel and pupils in special assemblies. There is the school council, which does the same. It also involves uh, the management. And then there is the general assembly in which every member of the learning community, even the external ones, so companies, collabor external collaborators, neighbors and institutions are welcome to join in. So let's delve into interactive groups, which is the educational technique we implemented in EcoThings project. The main characteristics are that um, it involves three to six students, so the groups shouldn't be smaller than three and bigger than six, uh, one or two adults. The focus is on problem solving and or project-based learning. So um, uh, the key is basically to form groups with more capable and less capable peers. This is extremely important and we will understand it when we'll talk 
about the zone of proximal development in the next video. The adults um, limit their, their activities to supervision. So they just check that the students are doing what they are supposed to do. They do not engage in the activity itself. As you can see, the pupils, the students, are at the very center of the learning process here. They have to collaborate in order to achieve the established goal. The goal can be um, a specific result about a subject that we're teaching or an output, a physical or digital output. There are then high levels of inclusion and participation and uh, incre increased sense of responsibility, self-esteem and proactiveness. Responsibility, self-esteem and proactiveness are three major skills when you work with kids at, at risk of social exclusion. Um, so we use interactive groups uh, in a wide variety of situations at our school. Uh, within the classroom, when we have these assemblies uh, with, among um, classroom representatives and teachers, parents, we also use interactive groups. We even use it uh, when we uh, perform the afternoon school, which is the school uh, in which uh, teachers devote some of their free time to help their own students and some other students to do homework. Uh, so we also implement interactive groups during, uh, uh, during the afternoon. Um, why do we use them? Because we believe that the outputs are important. Like in EchoThings, you have seen in the previous videos probably how to build um, uh, a smart house and how to control it. That's a wonderful output. But it's as important as the way we achieve that output, so the pedagogical guidelines. And that's why we use interactive groups um, to emphasize collaboration. What is the base, uh, the pedagogical base of interactive groups, groups? Because as such, it's just a technique. What is the pedagogy behind it? The pedagogy relies on the theory of social learning by Lev Vygotsky. Lev Vygotsky uh, based his work on uh, Gazelle and Piaget theories, which thought that the cognitive development and psychological functions originate from a child directly, which is certainly true. They originate from it, but how can they be fostered? That's why he em emphasized the importance of culture in a child's development of cognitive abilities, such as reasoning and communication. The key points, according to Vygotsky, are that in a society, adults foster cognitive development in children by engaging them in meaningful and challenging activities. These two adjectives are really important, and you will see how we implemented them in EchoThings project from the technical and pedagogical perspective. Meaningful and challenging. A child's social interaction with more uh, learned peers and adults may support a child's potential development. So far I can do this, but I might do that. Um, in absence of interpersonal instructions, a child's psychological functions may not show much progress as their mental processes would be based solely on their discoveries. So we cannot leave the child alone in his development. We can accompany him by using more learned peers or adults. So how does the theory work exactly? This is what we are going to engage with through the zone of proximal development in the next video, which is Pedagogical Guidelines 2.